social media streams are working. I believe I can see not only our Facebook Live feed, but our YouTube feed as well. Let me just make sure I can see all of you guys and that I can see all of you here on my phone so I can um, do some moderating and see your comments, which is great. Jumping on. Yep, here we go. I can see us. I can see you here and I can see you here. Alrighty. Well, it's great to have everybody here. My favorite day of the week, Free Tip Friday with BeadShop.com. You know, Fridays are kind of a, what shall I say, a more casual vibe here at Bead Shop when we do these broadcasts. Um, and I am here working the camera and the comments and uh, the sample, so you always have to bear with me because everything is always... Uh, it's always kind of, um, you know. Um, so uh, we've got uh, Janice, I believe, is on and jumping on and saying hello over on the um, Facebook feed. And I think she's going to also hop over to the YouTube feed as well. It's great to have everybody here. And so, as always, if you are checking out our broadcast for the first time, or one of the first times, um, as I said earlier, Free Tip Friday is a little more of a casual vibe, since I'm the one doing all the work in front of and behind the camera. Um, but you can also find us every Wednesday uh, at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Time as well, for our more formal uh, Bead Shop Live broadcast as well. You can find all of the product that I'm using here today, as well as any broadcast. You can find it right on our website at beadshop.com. Uh, I also published a quick blog over on our blog, Bead Table. It's also called The Bead Table. You can reach it from our homepage on our website, beadshop.com, or you can just do a search in your Google bar for um, The Bead Table bead shop blog and it should pop up. It does have a list of all of the things that I'm using today. It doesn't have links yet and it doesn't have the video yet obviously because I'm doing the video right now but after the broadcast it'll have all of that info. Um, but I'll go over what I'll be working on with today and I think you guys are gonna love it. You know we have been talking about um, a lot of kind of micro macrame uh, not only in our beadshop.com Facebook group also called the bead table but we've been doing it uh, a little bit uh, the past couple of weeks here on our live broadcasts. Last Free Tip Friday, last week, um, I did a poetry, one of our uh, project we call poetry, which is simply um, a square flat knot, macrame flat knot. And then we did it again this past Wednesday on Bead Shop Live on the Wednesday broadcast with Janice's sample, which was tremendous. I thought it was great with the uh, um, bugles that she used, all of that kind of stuff. So we're taking that macrame flat knot, that flat square knot, one step further today, and I think you're going to like this project a lot. So let me see who we've got going on today. Everyone's saying hello. Everyone loves my earrings. Thank you. A little something from the Kate Richburg line that I'm wearing. I am also wearing my beloved, one of my beloved shirts from Oaxaca, Mexico. Um, I love the Oaxacan textiles and the Oaxacan style embroidery, so this is one that I got uh, in one of my many trips to my beloved Mexico. So um, that's what I've got there. So thank you for all those kind comments. It's very nice. Um, it looks like we've got everybody watching from all over, which is great. Um, as I always say, we are making the world a friendlier, kinder place one bead at a time. So it's great to see all of you guys coming over from worldwide, coming here and gathering at the bead table. So it uh, looks like Gita is over on the Facebook live feed commenting and moderating as beadshop.com and Janice has hopped over to our uh, YouTube feed as well. So I wanted to also mention <clears throat> 
for the replays. You can find these replays in a few places. As you know, you can find them right on our website, beadshop.com. Both our Facebook Live, our Bead Shop Live, and our Free Tip Fridays. And if you give our YouTube channel a follow, you will get a notification every time we go live and any time we post a video. So those are good ways to keep in touch with us. And of course, last but not least, go to our website and sign up for our newsletter. If you haven't, it's the best way to stay in touch with us because we do all kinds of fun things through our newsletter. And it's our main way of kind of communicating with you, our sales, our new product, all that new stuff when stuff is back in stock. All that lives through our newsletter. So, uh, okay, um, I'm going to take a bracing drink of coffee. I promise it's coffee. And uh, I'm going to turn the camera around and let's get the show on the road because I've got a lot to share with you. So, alrighty, let me uh, stand up, turn this camera around, bear with me here. As I do that, you're going to start to see our project, which I am, as I said before, can you tell? I'm kind of excited about it. Let me do this. It looks like my cords are caught on something. What a surprise. And things are going to be waving around a little bit until I get everything in order. So either look away or take a Dramamine because it's going to be a little, a little, a little rocky. Or as Betty Davis likes to say, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Um, okay, there we go. So um, let's get together here. Let's get our business together. There we go. You can see a little sneak peek of what we've got going on and some pearls and stuff as well. So <clears throat> let me get all of this going. I hope everybody has plans for a great and fun and productive weekend. I'm going to be in the studio this weekend. I'm actually working on kind of a super secret project which is kind of um which is kind of fun that you guys will know about all in due time um but it involves it definitely involves my torch which is great um and there we go let me get that going up a little bit more so you guys can see what's shaking okay there we go uh, so that'll be fun and uh, this project that I'm sharing with you guys today I think is going to be a contender for your weekend project for sure uh, it would be a great one for the weekend um, so I'm gonna sorry the camera is a little rocky there we go okay so people have been asking about this button loop. Oh, it's Canada Day. Thanks, Michelle, for letting me know. Happy Canada Day weekend to our dear friends to the north. Um, I have, you know, a lot of my in-laws still live in Canada, are from Canada. My mother-in-law was born in Canada in just outside of Saskatoon, uh, to be precise. And I, here's a shout out for Saskatoon and Saskatchewan. I love it there. Um, and uh, so happy Canada Day to all of you guys. My Facebook feed will probably be flooded with fun from my Canadian relatives. So um, happy Canada Day to all of you guys. That's great. Um, I love, I just love it up there. It's so beautiful. It's a beautiful country. Um, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. You guys were, uh, yes, and happy Pride. It is, Curtis, it is Pride weekend right here in San Francisco, and it is going to be a hot one, as always. Um, San Francisco really comes alive during Pride, for sure. Um, so, uh, here is the button loop that we're going to talk about uh, today to begin with. Um, and I know that you guys were cracking up on Friday, or on Wednesday rather, during the broadcast, because um, I made the world's tiniest little loop, right? So <laughs> I'm going to make this loop again, and I'm going to use some of this large uh, cord right here so you guys can see me do this. And so let me get in kind of tight. Let me get the... Um, 
I'm gonna get the iPad over here so I can zoom in so you guys can really see what I'm doing uh, here. Okay, so this right here is the, uh, the button loop that I'm gonna make, and it's the one that I made at the end of the broadcast on Wednesday. Let me free it up a little bit so you guys can see it. See that there? So there's the loop, and this is one I think that was stumping a few of you, so I'm gonna go over it. Um, so here is your friend and mine, the giant ball of twine. So we're gonna make this a little bit of a larger, um, a little larger in scale so you guys can see it, okay? So over on the blog, I've started the directions already. I'm gonna go over there so I can see it. Um, but I've started to write down what I've been doing um, already so you can kind of see what's shaken. Let me see if I can pull it up though here. Bear with me here just a second. There we go. <clears throat> and so what I'm calling this project is, I'm calling this the macrame lattice bracelet. And can you see, let me, let me get a little closer here. Can you see how it's like a lattice? It kind of opens up here, okay? So it's still the macrame flat knot, um, but I'm doing kind of two rows of it. So it's pretty easy um, to, uh, to put together. And this is, this is kind of what I'm calling the lattice section, the sections that are open, okay? So first we're gonna tackle this um, button loop. And so the button loop in this sample, I used three and four uh, millimeter fire polish, okay, for this. And the three and four millimeter fire polish work really nicely with, um, <clears throat> pardon me, with the, uh, I used fine Ceylon here for this, okay? And so last night when I took all of this stuff home to make the project and I had already told, um, I had already told Drea, yeah, I'm doing some micro macrame and I'm doing it with pearls. Well, I had figured, well, even if I use a single strand of this fine Ceylon, I'll be able to get our pearls on there. Three and four millimeter fire polish, and it actually worked really perfectly. Beth is commenting that it does look crocheted. It does kind of have a crocheted look almost or almost a tatted look to it as well, which I kind of like. So <clears throat> this top loop is the double lark's head knot. So it's a series of double lark's heads that I'm going to show you. Okay. And you could use, my mom is asking, just curious, why not regular macrame instead of the lark's head knot? So see how this loop is flat the lark's head kind of gives the nodding, it kind of makes those, those little If I um, was making this with the regular flat macrame knot, the loop would actually be facing the other way, right? It would be facing let me see if I can explain this a little bit better. Maybe I'll show it on here. So here's the big loop like this, okay? So the lark's head makes that loop flat. If I were doing flat knot, the loop, the, the orientation of the loop would actually be a little different. So it would come around this way and it wouldn't sit as nicely on Like so this whole piece then will sit flat on your wrist. I hope that makes sense. It was a little bit of a packed explanation job, but that's why I use the lark head to make the button loop flat rather than in this orientation here, if that makes sense. Okay, so 
we make the loop out of that double larks head all the way around. And you can see over here, let me, here. And sorry, my Facebook is actually glitching a little bit. Our stream is fine, um, but our face, I can see that our, I'm sorry, our YouTube is a little glitchy. Um, if on first view, if any of the video is glitchy, you can always watch it on replay and it should be uninterrupted. So I'm sorry, it may just be me um, with my um, internet here, but the stream is, is strong, so we'll be fine. So I'm just mentioning that. Um, so here are the series of the flat lark's head knots, okay, just there. And so that's how we start this project. We start with, let me click over to the blog. Um, we start with, uh, I cut three strands of thread, okay? And I cut, what I used for this one here, I used the fine Ceylon, and I cut three strands of the fine Ceylon at 96 inches, and then I doubled it over. Yeah, it looks like you guys are also having some issues with the YouTube, but um, you, can, um, you can click over to the Facebook feed, or you can watch it in replay. I'm sorry about that. It does seem like my YouTube stream, the YouTube stream is a little, um, is a little glitchy today, but well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You never know what's going to happen. Um, so we cut, as I said, 96 inches of this thread and we cut three strands. Okay. And remember for this one with the fire polish, I used all fine, and this one that I'm gonna do with the pearls is with the fine and the micro, okay? And you're gonna see why that's different, okay? So the way that I start is, let me get back over to the feed here. The way I begin is I come in Sorry, I'm trying to get back to the feed. There we go. Um, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna move this stuff over and I'm gonna start with making this Lark's Head Knot, okay? And we're gonna go from this and then we'll switch over to this micro, okay? So <clears throat> I wanna kind of clear my board a little bit here. And you know, choose the colors that you like. I used cocoa and I used the um, copper rose, which I like both of, uh, but we have a whole host of colors on the website that you can choose from. Sorry, I'm trying to get my thread all undone from my macrame board. So speaking of macrame board, you can see I am using our large macrame board, which I love and it's great um, for this, pro this project because um, you can do a couple, you can get a couple on there. Let me get this loop back here. There we go. A little bit bigger because I want you guys to see that. So this, as I say, the Ceylon is the cocoa and this one, the Ceylon is the copper rose. And I'm going to put all of this aside here for just a second. So as I said, I cut three strands of 96 inches, okay, which is a lot of thread to deal with and too much thread to deal with when I make this lark's head knot. So I'm just going to use my twine and I'm going to cut three long pieces, but not too long so uh, I can deal with them on air. So this kitchen twine is also great for practicing your stitches, right? It's sometimes doing like a little sampler or something here um, makes your life just a little bit easier. There's two strands. I'm gonna get the three strands of this so we can see it because I'm gonna actually start this with this 
fat twine so you guys will be able to see it. And then we'll move to the Ceylon. So any of the Ceylon will work. You can go from micro all the way up to regular as long as your beads will slide onto the thread. So what you want to do is you want to cut your three strands of 96 inches. You want to divide it in half like I'm doing here. Okay. And sorry, I'm off screen. There we go. I have three screens in front of me, so I don't know which one to look at. Sorry. And we're going to tie a slip knot, which is simply making a loop and pulling the thread through. Okay, like this. And we're going to get some T-pins, and we want to pin this to our board. And if you don't have T-pins, it's okay. Just use a sewing pin. doesn't matter. Okay? And we're going to split those threads so that three are over here to my right and three are over here to my left. Now, just to note, with this one that the pearls are going to go on, the one that I used with the Coco Ceylon, I used one strand, and it's hard to see, but I'm going to pull it up to the camera so you can kind of see it. I cut one 96 inch strand of the fine and two 96 strands, 96 inch strands of the micro. And I need this micro because the pearls aren't going to fit on the fine. So this is the micro and the fine. And then just a reminder, this one that has the fire polish is all fine. Okay. So whatever you choose, whatever you need to do, you need that long six inch or that long strand, 96 inch strands, tie that slip knot in the middle so I can, you know, kind of tighten it down like that here. And now I'm going to make my lark's head knots with my threads here. I choose two that are going to be my base strands and one that I macrame with. So I'm going to push this board up just a little. Let me see if I can do it without pushing everything off the table here. I want to show you how I set this up because this is also, I think, kind of clever for me, uh, kind of clever if I do say so myself to kind of set it up. So can you see the bottom of the board here with these notches? That's what makes this board so um, uh, so handy, okay? Because I come in and I just push my thread through the little slit there and I bring it up and around and tighten it up here, okay? Because remember, the secret to really good, clean macrame knots is to have a very nice and taut center strand. At least that's what works out for me. Now I'm going to put my little spool of Ceylon. This is actually the fine Ceylon underneath. So I can reach underneath so there's a little tunnel. Okay. And just very quickly as a note, someone asked how large does this knot have to be? or this loop have to be, this loop goes away. So this really has nothing to do with the button. What we'll have to do with the button is when we finish that series of lark's head knots, okay? So let's go ahead and do those lark's heads. Now I'm right-handed, okay? So I'm gonna show, I make my loop facing towards my right hand. And so lark's head knots are just a series of kind of half hinges, half hitches really, all going in the same direction. And whether or not you pass this thread over or under the center strand is what makes them go in the opposite, or in, in uh, that scalloped direction. And you'll see what I mean as I, um, as I knot them, okay? So, I've started with my right hand, I've made my P, and the loop of the P, the thread, is going over the center of my uh, core, my macrame thread, and all I do is simply bring that end of that thread underneath and up through that loop, and pull it tight, okay? Now, I make another lark's head, but this time, see how the loop from my P is going underneath my center thread. So I simply go in and pull the thread through from below. 
and you can see I'm going to get a little tighter in on that knot so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to do this again. So that's made that full lark's head. Okay, so here's one half as I make the loop and I just simply pull the thread underneath the center and up. And now I go from below, make that loop from below the center thread, reach through and tighten. Okay, there's my second set of scallops or lark's head knots. Okay, so I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna go a little bit faster at Kate speed so that we get through this loop. So over and through and under and through. So the mantra is over and under and through and under and over and through. You're simply just tying these knots in opposite not really opposite directions, but over and under to create that series of scallops. And again, tension. Tension, kids, tension. We want to make sure that we are keeping everything nice and even so that our scallops look nice. Oh, and you can see. See how I made a mistake? Can you see it? Just a little there. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. There we go. That might look a little bit better. Can you see how I made two going in the same direction? So see how it's not a scallop, but it's more like a little diagonal? So I know if I see that, I just need to pick it out because I was too busy talking and not paying enough attention to my knots. Okay. And if you have a beading awl, it's a great way to help you get those knots out of your macrame, or you can use your pin, okay, whatever. So this needs to go over, because I've done a complete scallop there. So over and under, get out of there all, and go up, tighten everything up. We don't want it to be lax or else it won't be a nice macrame knot. And under and up. We're going to be doing on the uh, next Wednesday on uh, Bead Shop Live. I have yet, we're going to work through, this is the last of kind of our basics because we're all preparing for Brittany to come. Um, she's actually coming in a couple of weeks to do a wonderful West County Cuff project but she's coming in August to do a micro macrame project. So once we conquer all of these knots, you guys, this lark's head and the flat square knot, um, we're gonna be in good shape for Brittany's uh, piece, which is just slightly more advanced. So the more we practice, the better we're gonna be at it. And so next week is the final in my series of little, um, macrame kind of beginning micro macrame to get us all ready for Brittany. So can you see here I'm going to do one last one okay one last one here and one last one under okay like so. Alrighty so we need to start figuring out uh, at this point once you have some made you need to start figuring out uh, what's gonna fit your button, okay? So simply, all I do here is, this looks visually about right, and obviously this is greatly magnified because this isn't really the thread we're gonna make the project with. So I'm gonna free up my thread, okay? And I'm gonna take this pin out, and now I take out that loop by just doing this, okay? So there's my series of lark's head knots over and under going across. And if we're doing this for pearls, let me lay this one out. Of course, I've got 96 inches of thread and it's 
super tangly, so bear with me here. So see here, you can't really see, sorry, I keep hitting that camera. I'm gonna take out this loop just like I did with the bigger cords, and I'm gonna lay this above. And I'll show you, there it is, okay? So if this one for my pearls, I have two strands that are fine, I'm uh, sorry, two strands that are micro, and one strand that's fine. And it would be, this would be the strand that's the fine Ceylon, and these two would be the strands that are the micro, okay? Because we need that micro Ceylon to um, string the pearls onto. But I used a strand of fine um, I added it in there so that the lark's head knots would be nice and sturdy, nice and big. Okay, so stick with me. The light's going to go on. And also, as a reminder, this is all fine Ceylon, the bigger size, um, because I used the 3 and 4 millimeter fire polish, and that fine Ceylon goes through those beads just perfectly. Okay, so the next step would be... Let me get this out of the way here for just a moment while I continue the demo on this guy. So I bring everything around, okay, and we'll check the size for our, for our button. And can you see how, again, how this loop, since the knots are only on one side or since the scallops are only on one side, that the loop sits nice and flat. That's what we want. Okay, I'm getting a little tighter. Now, I want to make sure that everything is even here, and it is, so I'm going to pin this loop down. Pin it down, and pin it down. Okay. So now, what I need to do is, I need to kind of reverse I'm going to make a little mark on here so we know that these two are our micro threads. Just so you can see how I deal with those. Okay. These two are our micro threads, or these four rather, are our micro threads. And these two, without the mark, are our fine weight threads. So now you want to bring your fine weight to the center, okay? And these fine weight are going to really stay here in the center. These aren't really going to move around, okay? These are going to run down the center of your bracelet. It's these micro strands that are going to um, kind of move back and forth and be on the outside, okay? So now I have my left hand threads over here, okay, and my right hand threads, which are over here, okay. So I'm going to put my beads on my outer micro and my outer micro over here. Let me see if I can grab, I didn't really think about grabbing some beads for this, which was kind of lame. Let me see if I can grab some beads real quick. I bet that Chris and or Kara are watching. Maybe I can text and say, hey, um, I'm going to see if they can hear me from here, Kara. And then I'm going to ask for Matubos, please, any color. Let's see what happens, I'll bet. I'll bet someone will come to my rescue and bring me some beads. I thought I was so set to go, okay? So, but that's okay. So, um, let me pull this one in so you can see what's happening. Let me undo this from our, from our board. Bear with me. There's so many strings. So many strings. So little time. There we go, this is better. Now what I also did at this point, 
Okay. My two bows. There we go. Um, what I also did at this point was I made some needles on the outside or on all of the tips of my thread. And I did that by just using some zap glue and stiffening the ends. Okay, put a little bit of zap glue on a baggie, run the ends of the um, thread through that baggie, and let it uh, cure, let it dry. What I also did as well, because when I unspool the Ceylon off of the spool, it's really wavy, so I used my um, hair, my crimping iron, not crimping iron, flattening iron, to flatten down um, the Ceylon so it's not crinkly, so it makes it nice and smooth and easy to go, easy to do. So you can see here, I'm gonna start in the middle, and so I'm gonna take away this outside strand, which my beads are gonna eventually go on to, and this outside strand that my beads are eventually gonna go on to, okay? And I'm gonna pull these two center strands together, and I'm gonna lift them up. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see. Then I'm gonna start my flat macrame, my square knots, just here in the middle. And I do it just like we've done the poetry, just like we've done, I don't know, every, every Bollywood, all of the ones we do with our flat knots. And so we essentially just make, I'm gonna start with the Q side. See how I've made that Q? I bring the opposite end over and under the center strands and tighten. Whoops, except this is taking my seal on out. Let me get that out of the way. And tighten it up. Okay, brings everything together. Now I go in the opposite direction. I do my P side strand, my P strand here, over and up and underneath. Okay, now I just go back and forth, back and forth. There's Kara. <laughs> I told them you would hear. <laughs> Thanks, Kara, Kara. Kara to the rescue. What are you doing? I'm, I'm demoing <laughs> on the big cord, and I can't do it without those matubos. As soon as I started this, I was all, uh-oh. <laughs> I have everything but those matubos. Thank you. So I just continue to go back and forth and make that series of square knots. What a team we have here at beadshop.com. Okay, so can you see that? I'm just going, and for every pair of knots, I make this length for the ones that I've used in the real bracelets. I've made a series of about five pairs of knots or ten singles. And I'll show you the way that I count those up here. I count the scallops to make sure I know how many I have. So here's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I need one more set. Okay? And that will give me five. Or. 10 singles, but five pairs, okay? Let's count those one more time. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. Five square knots, perfect, okay? Now, I'm going to get my matubos, or in, or in the case of my pieces that I've had here, my fire polish, or, for the one in cocoa, my rice pearls, okay? And I'll dump a few out. And I'm gonna string my beads on the sides. I should have made needles on the ends of these, but we'll make them go through. I use, let me see if it's still hanging around here. I made a wire needle on air. Here it is. Let me see if I can use it. I made a wire needle on air on Wednesday. Um, Janice and I have ordered the wire in for it. Um, this will be handy, I think, to get 
that thread through there. We ordered the craft wire to get it in there. Let's see here. There we go. <coughs> Come back here. Yeah, there we go. That little craft wire needle that I made is always handy. Now, you want to um, put on enough beads that will be about the same length as this center macrame. If you make the center macrame a little shorter, obviously you would use fewer beads, but whatever works for you. I'm going to see what five look like. And also, if you use an extra one, you can make it kind of puff out a little bit, right? If you have it so it's nice and straight like this, or you use an extra bead so when you tie it, it kind of scallops out a bit. Let's see what that looks like. Two, four, six. So that's six Matubos. So you could also do this with Matubos like this and surfer cord, right? If you wanted something that was a little, I don't know, bigger, sturdier, larger in scale, uh, you could do that as well. Surfer cord would look great. Um, it would give it a whole different air. Alrighty. So Kim just said that she's watching with her chocolate lab, Coco. And every time I say Coco, let me see, let me try it. Coco, you're a good girl. What does she say? Coco. <laughs> and all my cat friends, all my kitty cat friends who watch along with their pet owners. I love it so much. I bet Sam, Sam, are you out there? Little Sam. I bet you guys are all watching. That brings me so much joy to see everybody watch with their pets. I think it's so funny. So I'm going to take now these three that I've done. So this is the one that I put the beads on. This is uh, another, the other strand that I used here to tie my um, square knots with, and one of the pieces from the core. Okay. And so the core piece, what I want to do is I want to uh, kind of bring the core, this core is always going to be the core, okay? So I bring the core over and tighten it in. It doesn't really make that much difference if you're using all the same size thread, but if you're using the micro and the fine, you want to make sure that you're always doing the outer macrame with the micro and keeping the fine cord on the inside, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to just come in and I'm going to macrame it in. Okay, so here's that. I just make that big P, uh, or the Q side rather. This side all goes over here. Let me pin that kind of out of the way so we don't see it. Then I could also bring this underneath instead of on top so it's a little neater. There we go. So now I just do my series of square knots. So there's my cue. I go over that tail, under the center, and up. And tighten that up. Can you see that there? And that's it. I'm going to put one more and that Matubo wasn't quite right, so I'm going to put one more Matubo on because I want it to kind of scallop out just a little bit more. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm going to put one more on, tighten this up, put this up. Lori just asks, she's watching over on the Facebook feed, that yes, all of our videos are, can the video be saved is what she's asking. and. Uh, yes, these videos can be watched and rewatched and rewatched. Uh, they're archived on our Facebook page uh, for beadshop.com, and you can also look at our video archive over on our YouTube channel at um, beadshop.com as well. So you can watch this over and over, don't you worry. So let me show you that again, that one of those middle cords becomes this center cord over here. I bring this cord over and underneath ready to tie my um, 
my square knot with and the Matubo strand is my P, my loop. Okay, so I come over. Let me really get those cords out of my way. They want to just tangle. So here's my Q. I go over the Q, under the center strand, and up to tighten. And also on beadshop.com, we have a really nice how to macrame skill builder. Okay, so you can really see how the macrame knot is done if you need a little extra help. Now I want you to look right here. See, there's that scallop again. So we can always start to read our knots, okay? Um, we can always start to see where I, I now need to tie my next square knot because I can see that scallop. So I know that scallop means I need to make my loop on the scallop side. And now I just tie that square knot again over the leg of the P, under the center cord, and up. Give it a little tug before you tug it, and it'll keep this all nice and even. There we go. And so you just make these are now going to be the side strands. Okay, let me make this a little bit wider. And I just go back and forth. And I'll show you where this is on my more completed one over here, but I'm going to go a little bit at speed, okay, to get this done. And I'm going to do uh, what I say to do on the directions on the blog is make these lengths six pairs or 12 half hitches um, down. So I've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I need two more sets, okay? And then I'll show you what we've got here. Okay, on this one and this one. So that should be five, right? Two, four, five. And one more set is six. One and two, okay. So this that's coming down, you can see, where's my pointer? get in a little tighter. You can see there's my big loop. Here's my loop. There's my half of my beads here and I've come down and done this side. So now I need to put my Matubos over on this side and complete this on the other side here. All right so let's just reverse it. Okay and sometimes what I like to do is I like to pin things down a little bit so they stay kind of tidy on my board okay just like that so <clears throat> let's put our left-handed threads away for the moment and work with our right-handed threads I'm gonna move those beads too or else they're gonna end up on the floor okay and so Let's get my little needle that I made, put this through, and how many Matubos did I use? Two, four, six, seven. I used seven Matubos, so let's put seven on. Matubos are actually like a big, kind of a two-aught size. They're also, um, those of you who have been beading for a long time, may know these as crow beads, they're also known as. That's kicking it way back way back down. So two, four, six, and seven. I don't even know what color these, these are. These are the um, Matubo Red Matte Nebula is what these are. Super pretty. So these come around, they come up, and we'll do that whole thing again. I'm gonna tie flat knots. I'm going to thread here. See how my center thread is coming out of the core here? I want to pull it over so it's the core that I'm tying around here. I'm going to tuck it under in the little opening in my macrame board. Put my 
Coco Ceylon underneath, so I'm creating a tunnel, and I'm gonna slip that thread that I'm gonna do my square knot with underneath. Ready to tie this side, and I needed to tie six, let me get this way out of the way. There we go. I needed to tie six sets of square knots here. Okay, so I always start with the one that uh, has the beads on. Okay, so just here, like this, over the leg of the, or the loop of the P here, over that leg, under the center, and up. Tighten that down. Okay, so that makes my first um, half hitch, my first half of my square knot. And again, we're reading our knots. Let me get that right in there so you can see it. See how my scallop is on this side towards the center? So I know that the next loop I need to tie to make my second half of my square knot pair is on this side. So I come round, I go over and under and up and make sure that the tension is good, okay? Watching like the Facebook feed, sometimes the comments kind of cover the screen, right? So I try and really be aware of where I'm working, but you could also swipe left um, to remove the comments so you just see the screen and no comments. You could always try that as well. Or I think on the replay, um, if it is getting in the way of you seeing what I'm doing, um, you can always swipe, swipe left to get rid of the comments there. Uh, let me count and see how many I have. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. I need one and a half more sets. So there's the fifth one on that side, and now here are number. I look at it, and I pull these together, and yes, they're even in size. And now what I do to make it bow out just a little bit is I free everything up so I've got it all loose. Now I pin, what I do is I bring these guys together and I kind of pin them so there's a little bit of there. Can you see that? So I've pinned them kind of open there like that. Now I just need to, now it's just repeat. Right? All we need to do, repeat, repeat, repeat. So here's the center, okay? So I'm getting my two center strands. These should be my, if I'm doing this with pearls, these will be your fine cords. These two will still be your micro and your micro here. If they're not, actually I think it's these cords because it's the one coming down the center, so I have to reverse them. I should mark these again with my pen, or I should have gotten two colors of twine, but I'll mark them. These are my micro ones over here and over here, and over here and over here, okay? Uh, but you'll be able, obviously, if you're working with micro and fine, you'll be able to see the difference, right? But for our purposes today, it's not as easy to tell because I'm using all the same. So I'll lift, I'll bring this back, my center strands back, put my cord, my spool of cord underneath to make it all nice and taut. And now I'm just going to come in. That series of square knots again. We're just repeating this section. That's it. It's going back and forth on these sections. So I kind of push those down and I'll come in and I'll start my square knot. 
with the P side and up. See how this just tightens, 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 tightens. And there it is. And then you're going to go back and forth. And yeah, for your first try, you know, get seal on if you want and use some just some beads that have big holes, right? Um, doing kind of a practice run with this, I think, is always a great try. You could even try it if you had some, I don't know, yarn that's not too furry or whatever, you know. You could try it with that, but cording is probably better. Surfer cord would be, two colors of surfer cord would be a great way to teach yourself this. Okay, and what did I say? I had five in the center. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. So that's it. Bring those, and then we just string our matubos on. Okay. I'm sorry that our YouTube feed is a little glitchy today. It's probably a YouTube thing because it looks like our Facebook feed is pretty um, stable over there. So I'm sorry that it's not, that YouTube is not working as well for everyone. Okay, so I'm going to put these on and um, what did I say? I used seven, right? I want to get over to these other two before I sign off um, because it's getting to be that time. But I wanted to give you some ideas to practice with this weekend. Two, four, six, seven. There we go. Slide them up. And then this one's ready to go. So you can see what's happening here. Okay, and I'll just unpin all of this so we can really look at it. And this here, so you can really look at it. This macrame board really holds this cord well. So see here, you have the loop, and these loops just kind of keep going around. So you have kind of this cool, I don't know, I think it looks cool, kind of big like this, in a big, uh, kind of in an oversized uh, design, okay? So what I've got here, I'm going to put this guy aside for just a second. And we'll bring this one in. And you can see I've continued. This is caught on the board. Bear with me here just a second. Let me undo it. That's the one thing. These large macrame boards, the small or the large, whatever, they really do hold your threads nicely. But it's kind of a pain to get them off. Um, so here you can see I've done the um, the three and four millimeter. Let me get a little tighter with the fine seal on. There's the series of larks heads. There's that center right, and the beads are strung on the outsides. Then the macrame flat knots over the two cores. Then they come together. The beads are along the outside, and so on. Okay. So for the micro, I have it here. I want to show you this. We might run just a hair long, but I want to show you this so you guys get it because I did say this was macrame and pearls and I haven't even touched a pearl yet, so I want to do that. So here's, and it's so tiny after that big cord, right? So here's my lark's head. I'm going to flatten it out, bring it together, Again, it's another member of the tiny loop club that I like to make, okay? And I'll hold it and I'll bring it together here and I'll double check that this goes through the button. Now the button I've chosen to use, this is called the Betty button. We finally got Betty back in, okay? And Betty, uh, this is one that we've had at beadshop.com forever and it takes a while. These are manufactured overseas, so takes a while for us to get them in, so we have them in right now, and I just adore them with this little flower um, motif on the front. So I just make sure that it's going to slip through, and it will, so I'll lay this down, make sure the loop is going the right way so the tops of those lark's head knots are facing the right way. I'm going to move my finger any second now, and I Pin it. I'm actually going to use, since this is a finer macrame, I'm going to actually use sewing pins for this one because sometimes those T pins are a little 
let me see if I can get it in the right place, are a little, I can't even see where to put it through, sorry. Maybe if I used a pin that had a point on it, that would also work. There we go. Sewing pins are a little bit easier sometimes to get in there. So I'm using these nice sewing pins. There we go, and I'm gonna do this and that. Okay, so can you see how I've set up the loop? Okay, just like that. Now, here is my, right here, is my fine Ceylon, my fine Ceylon, and my micro Ceylons are in the center. Note to self, next time use two different colors, but you guys hopefully can see it. Let me get those T-pins out of the way. I'm going to have this one ready to go. So now I bring, just like I did before, I bring that micro to the outside, the fine to the inside. Because remember, the fine cords are the cords that we're going to macrame around. These are always our core cords, the ones running underneath the knots. Okay. I'm going to tie kind of, I'm going to tighten them up here so they don't go anywhere. Put my seal on spool underneath. There we go. And I just want to macrame with one set of the micro. Now, this is when it gets a little tiny, a little teeny tiny, so you kind of have to bear with me. But I want to show you what the pearls look like because I promised pearls. So let me put this cord out of the way. Well, we don't want to put it out of the way too much because we want the loop. This first one is a little futzy because we want this loop to be able to come together right there. Okay, so I might even pin another Use your pins, you know. Don't uh, don't skimp on pinning this. There we go. That's going to help um, make this loop sit really nicely. So here I go with my P side. There's my loop. And notice how nice and flat my cords are because I used the flat iron to iron them beforehand. And I also used the zap glue to make the needles on the ends. Because when I start to put the pearls on here, you're gonna be real glad that the ends of these threads are stiff. And just inch that first knot right up there. And then you make just a series of the square knots. Pretend you're doing Bollywood here, okay? It's the same thing. This actually is kind of like a big Bollywood, except you're adding, instead of beads all the way down the side, you're also adding some macrame down the side, right? So again, I know this is super tiny, tiny. Let me see if I can get in even tighter. This is about as tight as I can go with it, but um, I'll show you as soon as I come to a stopping point here which is why I did it on the giant cord to begin with. Now this is probably a video, I know some of you are saying, I'm gonna go ahead and watch this video over and over several times, which is probably a good idea um, because knotting, you know, knotting is sometimes difficult. So you can watch and rewatch and rewatch as much as you need to get this right. And again, I recommend instead of, unless you're a pretty good macrame -er, right, pretty confident in your skill set, I would go ahead and do this on your practice threads or do a practice run so it doesn't all end in tears, not in tears, but you're not disappointed at the end when if you have a little trouble, you can just cut it up and start again. You're not invested that you screwed up on your on your finished bracelet. 
So let's see, I have done a series of, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see what five looks like here because the the pearl, it's how much, how many knots you do here directly relates to how big the bead is. So you can see I've stiffened the end of this, but I haven't clipped it. So I'm gonna give it just an angle cut to make it nice and stiff and pointy here. And now I've got my pearls. These are rice pearls. And we have rice beads in several types. We have them not only in pearls, but we also have them in semi-precious. There we go, and see how that just goes right through? Perfect. Now, this comes up. And you can see, that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll do two. Or I could, see how this rice pearl, it's a little, it might need a little bead on either side. I don't know, I'm just designing on the fly here. Um, maybe I'd use an 11 knot, or maybe I'd use a three millimeter. A three millimeter is what I have sitting right here. So that's what I'm gonna put on. Though an 11 knot would look good too. There we go. That looks nice. The scale might be a little bit big though. Let me see if I have an 11 sitting here. I don't think I do. I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to worry about it. So then I'm going to come in. I'm going to take one of these center cords move it over to the center. So these are my left hand threads. My right hand threads will all be over here. Pull that center cord or that bigger cord to the middle. And now I'm ready to macrame. I'm still not super stoked on how those fire polish look over there. So let's take them out. I'm gonna kind of take these pins out and I'm gonna look at the loop and really look and see what I've got here. I can also push this up just slightly because we want everything to sit nicely here. I think I might have enough room by pushing that up to just do that single pearl. I know you guys weren't feeling that three millimeter either. I could tell there was a collective there is a collective side eye when I put that on. But that pearl, that single pearl looks nice. I'm just going to tie that in and see, see what I get, right? We can always take it apart later. Let me get these side strands out of my way. There we go. And we just tie that, sorry, I'm out, a little bit out of frame there. Tie that in, and the micro sides, as you can see, or can't see, because they're so tiny. Yeah, there we go. I think that's actually fine. Um, the micro is what makes my, makes my knots. So they're gonna be kind of tiny. Let's see how this looks. You remember how Janice used the bugles in this piece or in her poetry on Wednesday 
I think bugles would also really look good running down the side of this thing, right? Bugles would be a great bead to use in this. Then you just continue on. And I'm going to put that other pearl on the other side so we take a look at it. And this is just how I experiment with, uh, with what I've got. Jackie just put a good tip on there, and it's a good one. If you're watching on your mobile or on your laptop, she gave a great tip that I think is good. She says, just a note when Kate shows the finished project, I take a screenshot of it and I save it to my projects I want to make. That is very clever because you can totally take screenshots along uh, what I'm doing here as you're watching the broadcast or watching rewatching um, the broadcast. It's a really great idea, Jackie. Very smart. Here, tighten it up, put that one underneath, and we're ready. Sit down there, there we go. There we go, we're ready for a pearl on this side. Okay. So then, I'm going to come in, put this on, and let's slide that up. Yeah, and okay, that looks, that looks, as Janice would say, kind of delicious. But the pearls are not for the faint of heart, so you may want to start with something bigger. Notice how it was giving me a little bit of sass, and then I pinned it and I told it who the boss of those threads were, and it's sitting just nicely. So don't, don't worry about not using your, um, about overusing pins. Just pin them right into place. I'm gonna finish this little leg, and then show you. I think it's depending on the iPad that you have you push the home button and the top button um, for a screenshot I do it all the time it's so automatic that I'm not sure which ones I do but you could always google how to screenshot on your iPad but yeah you certainly can okay here and here and there we go back around so remember you can all of these free tip Fridays and Bead Shop Lives on our website at beadshop.com. All of the freshwater pearls. Um, these are some of our brand new ones. And so our new pearl supply, we love them so much. Um, but again, freshwater pearls, it's kind of like when you buy yarn for a knitting project. Um, anytime you buy, like even glass beads, semi-precious, all of it, when you're buying beads, they may vary from lot to lot, right? So make sure and get everything you think you might need for this project because when you um, change it out or when you have to buy more, the beads may not be exact, right? And especially it's going to be that way with these freshwater pearls. Um, freshwater pearls, you know, are natural, so you can't really manufacture them to a standard. so. They will change, but we will have um, we will have a good supply, even if the supply changes. So I'm going to hold this up, and I'm going to try and get in kind of tight with the camera so you guys can see it. And you can see how nice um, that center macrame strand sits there, and you can see these are starting to go out from the bottom. And I'll probably make these about twice the length and then put on another pearl and continue on down. Again, I think these pearls look pretty nice like this, but I actually might use a tiny little 11-aught 
to um, to kind of cover the thread there if I feel like it needs it. So it just depends on what you like doing. Okay, so it looks good. All right. Um, so there it is. And so to close it, I know you guys are all, well, Kate, how do you close it? Well, I'm going to show you on, uh, on this guy here. I'm going to bring this one back in. And it's super simple what you're going to do. Uh, let me undo this, and let me actually take off these Matubos here. All of this stuff and this. So... Once you get to this point and you're at the end, okay, and let's say that you have finished up and you're, you're finishing with a scallop like this, okay, what you do is you macrame, you want to macrame over all of your threads. So these center threads would also be back in here. Then you get your button, macrame some, then you get your button, slide your button on, fold the macrame, I'm going to get these other strands out of there, but you can tell, right, you would pretend that these are all in there. The button is here, right, and then you just macrame back around like we did with the poetry to close it off. I add a little bit of glue, a little bit of hypo cement right there, macrame, 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 macrame it down, and do one final macrame, make sure it's glued down nicely, and then I would uh, singe my threads nice and close. And that's it. That's all she wrote. Okay. And then the loop would just come around and sit through the button. Okay. And I'll have a couple more of the um, of the photos up on the blog so you can actually see the finished piece. Um, I'll finish up uh, that other guy and I'll put a couple of shots, of the button shots up there so you can see it. But it's pretty simple, pretty easy to do. Um, and I hope you guys love it for kind of your summer weekend product project. Um, Whitney Studios is saying the cut delicas. A cut delica would be actually perfect, I think, with this as a little bit of glimmer right there. Maybe that's what I'll use to put this. I'll work this out just a little bit more. But that's the fun thing about Free Tip Friday is is that I work out a lot of, um, I don't know, a lot of designs um, on this broadcast, which is kind of fun. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it, right? Here's the other guy right here. So uh, you'll see that one here. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys make with this. Post it over on the Bead Shop Bead Table um, Facebook group if you're a member. If you're not a member, I don't know what you're waiting for. Go over there and answer our, um, our little questions to make sure that you're a person and not a robot. And we would love to see you over there. Uh, next week, we're going to kind of finish our micro macrame uh, adventure with um, one last micro macrame bracelet, which I think you're going to love to do. And then uh, the following week, uh, Brittany's here, and we're going to tackle um, West County Cuff, which has been my nemesis all of these years. So I'm really excited to do it. So I'm going to turn the camera around so I can say a fond farewell to all of y'all. Uh, and then there we are. Here I am. Oh, I need to maybe make the screen a little wider. There we go. And push push that around. Let me let me stand up so you guys can see me and I can see you. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. Two camera shoot, Richburg. Two camera shoot. It's on my wish list. Okay. There we go. I'm all together. Um, okay, so I will see you guys on Wednesday for some more micro macrame. Following week with Brittany for West County Cuff. Um, as I said, you can find everything for all of these projects over on our website at beadshop.com. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to shoot me an email, uh, Kate at Beadshop. I'll be happy to help if I can answer any questions. Or you can always find our wonderful customer 
service or what we call our customer happiness team. She's a team of one, Ardria. You can email her at info at beadshop.com. Well, that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great weekend doing some micro macrame, and I'll see you next week for Bead Shop Live. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.